Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barn, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And let's skip down now to verse 33. And I want you to read that together when I say one, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you so very much. You may take your seat. I want to talk just for a few minutes on the subject. You can't miss first base and win the game. You can't miss first base and win the game. Over 2,000 years ago, our Lord addressed a crowd of anxious people. They were perplexed and troubled about the future and the present. So Jesus gave a message to these Galileans and he told them while they were perplexed and disturbed about things in the future and the present, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you're worrying about and the things that you want will be added unto you. He says nothing about economic or political reform. He has no policy on social re re revolution. But he tells them to believe in God and the providential care of God. While these causes or problems in our lives are numerous and various and they all seem to have one thing in common. A lot of times the problems we have exist because we have our priorities in the wrong place. We have gotten our value system mixed up. In short, we really have these problems because we have started putting first things last and last things first. When I was just a little child, I heard a great preacher, an old preacher, the late C.L. Franklin, tell a story. He said a man one time was playing ball with his team, and he hit the ball, and he knocked it over the fence. Didn't you see that ball went over the fence? What do you mean? He's out. The umpire said, yes, I heard the crowd. Yes. I saw the ball go over the fence. Yes, I saw him run all around. But he forgot to touch first base. My brothers and sisters, I don't care how well you jump and how well you shout. In fact, you don't need to jump no how you live no how. I don't care how well you read the Bible. I don't care how well you sing. If you don't touch first base, you are out. Christ must be supreme in your life. Jesus said, seek ye first. All these other things are all right, but seek ye first. Get first base. And you don't have to worry about the other base. Get God in your life first. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. We must make sure our priorities are in the right place and not mixed up. Because see, our value system has failed in so many ways. We, we don't know how to prioritize right. We spend a lot of time on things that are not necessary. We spend billions of dollars digging up a little dust on the moon. And yet we can't even get a grant to clean up the streets. We are so busy making a living, we don't know how to make a life because our priorities are wrong. We tell a young lady, when you get out of college, get a man with money. 
and he ends up with a man with a man she ends up with a man with money but she has a man with money but no husband because somebody told you you need to have a man who's wealthy I don't know why some of you won't marry a man who's broke when you broke I have people saying, I, Reverend, is, does he have any money? Does that matter? If he loves you, that's what's important. Yeah. We teach our young women the wrong thing. Not look for a man with money, but make sure you get a man yeah. with values. Yeah. Our priorities are wrong. In our churches, we spend more time raising money instead of raising up a bow-down head. Yeah. We're more concerned about denomination instead of regeneration. We're more interested in having service instead of rendering service. We're so busy talking about singing uh, in this uh, promised land, and then some of us got the audacity to talk about, I'm standing on the promises, but we're sitting on the premises. Instead of singing, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? A band of angels coming after me. We are singing. I looked up the freeway. And what did I see? A Mercedes Benz coming to me. And some of us are so interested in getting a Mercedes Benz. And we find out the notes are so big. Then we stop saying Mercedes Benz. And mercy, these bills are killing me. Instead of going home, opening our Bible, reading about the prodigal son, we're turning on the TV watching Stanford and Son. <laughs> we're mixed up, we're confused. We're in the edge of night as the world turns, searching for tomorrow and finding out you got one life to live. <laughs> and before you know it, you end up in general hospital around the young and restless. The important thing is, who are you seeking? Get your priorities right. It's important what you seek in life. Get the first thing fixed. Because there are some things you have to do first. Before you can eat, you have to first open your mouth. Before you can see, you have to first open your eyes. Before you can breathe, you have to first inhale to exhale. Before you can do something, something has to be in place first. Before you can go to college, you have to first go to high school. Before you can run, you have to first pick up one leg to walk. Before you can walk, you have to first learn how to cross. And some of us don't want to put God first. We want to go all around second and third base and not touch first base. But if you don't get first base, you are out. I have been preaching for the last few months about tithing and stewardship and giving God what is his. Because too many of us want a full-time God, but we want to be part-time members. God will be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Am I right about that? Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. It's important. Jesus said, I want you to seek God first in what you do. Put God first in your time. Put God first in your gifts. Proverbs 3 and 9 said you to bring your first fruit unto the Lord. You see, you know why God wants you to put him first? He's a first class God. God doesn't ride coach. He rides first class. And if you're going to do anything, you're going to have to be a first class member. Put God first in everything you do. When you get up in the morning, do you get up saying, good Lord, this morning, or do you say, good morning, Lord? You ought to wake up in the morning saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. Before you speak to your wife, before you speak to your family, first speak to God. When you're looking for a job, put him first. 
get down on your knees and ask the Lord, should I be there? Will my present there make a difference? Ask him first before you get married. Ask God first. Or you end up with a moon and no honey. Looking for a honeymoon. <laughs> Isn't it so? Because so many things we say from I will to you better. But you got to learn how to put God first in your marriage. Because the storms are coming. Trials and tribulations will come. But if you have God first on board, you won't have to worry when the storm comes because you can wake him up and say, Master, don't you care if we perish? And he'll wake up in the storm and say, Peace. Be still. Put him first. We miss out on the most important thing. That was a man one time. He had a parrot. And this parrot... He bought this parrot and the parrot wouldn't talk. He went to the owner and said, I hope this parrot will talk. The owner said, he, he'll talk. Well, he bought him and put him in a cage and he went on back home. The parrot wouldn't say nothing. So he came back and said, you know, this parrot will not talk. He said, well, did you buy him a swing? He said, no. He said, you have to get him a swing. That's $10. <laughs> he bought the swing he went back the parrot wouldn't talk he came back he said I bought the swing and the parrot still won't talk he said well did you buy him a bell maybe if you buy him a bell he'll talk he said alright how much is that he said that's $10 <laughs> he bought the bell and went back and the parrot still wouldn't talk then he came back to the on and said, I bought the bell, I bought the swing, and this parrot will not talk. He said, well, he likes to climb things. Did you get him a little ladder? <laughs> he said, no, you didn't tell me that. He said, that might help. That's $10. <laughs> bought the ladder and the, took that back, put that in the cage. The parrot wouldn't talk. And he came back. He said, I'm tired of this bird. You can have this bird. I don't want it. He won't talk. He has a bell. He has a ladder. He has a swing. He just won't say nothing. The man said, well, maybe you need to get something else. He said, well, what do you want? Get him a little stand. And that's about $10. <laughs> he liked to stand on other things. He bought a stand and took that back there. The parrot still wouldn't talk. Well, several weeks went by. And he didn't see the owner. And finally the owner walks in. He said, well, how's the bird doing? He said, that old bird, no good. That parrot wasn't no good. That parrot wouldn't talk. He said, I, I, I'm just tired of talking about it. He said, well, what happened to it? He said, he died. <laughs> he said, well, did he say anything before he died? He said, yes. He said, what did he say? He said, that bird asked, is there any seed down there? <laughs> For heaven's sake. <laughs> Should have fed the doggone thing. <laughs> he starved him to death. What good is the swing and the bell and all that if you don't feed me? <laughs> Missed out on the most important thing. We have our priorities in the wrong place. And you need to first get the word of God. So many of us want to swing. We want to bell. We want to have a good time. We want to come to church and rejoice and shout and rejoice and shout and, and rejoice and shout. But oh, my brothers and sisters, if you don't get the word, you will die. Touch your neighbor and say that is the truth. I'm not going to be long. Why should a man seek God first? God is a first God. Everything Jesus said, and in the Bible, he talks about seeking God first because God is in the first class business. When God got ready to destroy Egypt, he went for the firstborn of Egypt. 
And the Bible said, God says, bring your first fruit unto the Lord. When they got ready to stone a woman, Jesus said, where are your accusers? She said, I have none, Lord. But before they got to that point, Jesus said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Jesus talked about hypocrites going around talking about one another. He said, oh, ye hypocrites, you need to first pull out what he said. When you're trying to talk about the beam in your brother's eye, the moat in your brother's eye, you got a beam, a splendor in your own eye. Cast out first the beam out of your eye before you can talk about the moat in your brother's eye. And the Bible tells us the dead in Christ shall rise first. And Jesus said, I am the first and the last. And Jesus also said, to the church, you have left your first love. God is a first class God. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And another reason why you ought to seek God first is because God loves people who seek. You know, God, he's impressed with you when you're a seeker. Now, you must be careful what you seek. See, seeking tells me that you are you are searching for something when a man goes down the street and he wants to get in his devilment and he goes down a certain lane and he turns and go down to another alley way down in a dark area and he's walking around and he's driving along looking he's seeking for somebody that comes swinging all on the pole. Amen. Don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. First of all, the police going to ask you what you're doing down here. Seeking. Isn't it so? Because a lot of people like to seek, but they seek the wrong thing. Some people come to church and you know they're seeking. They don't have church on their mind. Some men come in here seeking for a woman. Amen. And trying to look on the Bible with you as though he didn't have one. Or what verse did Reverend say? Getting all over in her Bible. And by the way, what's your phone number? Uh-huh. Because you didn't come to church to seek the Lord. You were seeking some woman. And some women, when they come to church, they come to church looking around, amen, 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 I'm looking for a man. Oh, yes. And then some of us have that dance and say, Adam, where art thou? It's true. But let me tell you something. Seeking for those things is not priority. And God knows you're supposed to have someone in your life, and the Lord knows that. But that's not what you're supposed to seek first. Not seek a wife, not seek a husband, not seek a family, not seek a car, not seek a home, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and God will add your wife, add your husband, Add your family, add your car, add your house. Touch your neighbor and say, God, I had it. Now, he's in the subtracting business. God will subtract. He will take away. But he also adds. And somebody say, multiply. He'll add those things. But how are you seeking it? How do you seek the kingdom of God? And what is the kingdom of God? Well, first of all, you can't have a king without a kingdom and no kingdom without a king. Everybody says, what is the kingdom of God? The rule of God in your life. If God rules your life, he's king. 
and you ought to be seeking for God to rule you. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the king. See, the church is not the kingdom. The church is a part of the kingdom. Right. Seek God to rule your life, to govern your life, control your life. And if God rules, govern, and control your life, he'll just add some things. You see, God's calculation is a little different from ours. One plus one plus one equals three. But in God's calculation, one plus one plus one equal one. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all make one. In our calculation, we said two times five is ten. Oh, but God says different. Bring me a little boy's lunch. And I can take two that makes supposed to make two times five is ten. And I can multiply and say five thousand. I can feed five thousand besides women and children. See, God doesn't add like us. Your sense trying to match up to God's sense always end up to be nonsense. When God wants you to go up, he said, come down. When God wants you to go out, he said, come in. When God want to really do something with you, he'll bust you apart so he can put you back together again. This calculation is not like man's calculation. So seek ye first God's will. Praise the Lord. And you know why you ought to seek things of God first? It's eternal. Jesus said that. Don't lay up treasures where moss can set in and thieves can steal. Because whatever you have, you have to leave it. Now, a lot of us are just trying to seek material things. That's good, but that's not important. You need something money can't buy. Because a lot of rich people getting divorced and unhappy. And if wealth can make you happy, then Elizabeth Taylor would keep some of her husbands. <laughs> As she told the last one, you enjoy it now because you may not be here long. <laughs> but let me tell you something. These material things, once you get them, they don't give you no happiness. God wants you to invest in him. Why put all of your trust in the stock market that could crash? Why put all your confidence in your home that could catch a fire? Why put all your confidence in your clothes? And, and look now, God's not against you having nice things. It doesn't bother God when you have nice clothes. It might bother some people. <laughs> because your enemies are always around you. And you know jealousy is so awful. How a thermos says like acid, it eats a hole in the container that's holding it. And some of the most jealous people in the world are church people. God not against you having a nice car. It's these church people. God not against your pastor having a nice car. It's some church members. Lord, you keep him mama, we'll keep him poor. Hello. And if he came riding down the street in an old piece of car, you all were holiday. Not my pastor. Right? If he had to get out and fix the hood and people around me, is that your pastor? No! <laughs> and if you buy him a nice car, now, Lord, have mercy. What's going wrong with these preachers? <laughs> if he doesn't have a wife, you complain about that. All the women in the church Lord, how come he can't get a wife if he's saved? <laughs> and then when he gets a wife, I just can't stand her. <laughs> gonna always find some people complaining about something. Some people gonna always be jealous of you. Don't want to see you with nothing. But let me tell you, let me tell you, these things are not important. You got to build your hope on things that are eternal. God not against you having it.
But those things are not priority. It's all right for you to look good out there. Some of us need to give God a helping hand. So I right, buy a new wig, put on some makeup. One preacher didn't like his wife on makeup until he saw how she looked without it, and then he told her to go back. <laughs> so we need to give God a helping hand. <laughs> so when somebody asks you, what's that on your ass? I'm giving God a helping hand. Somebody asks, well, what's that all on your head? That I'm giving God a helping hand. God's not against you having these things. He doesn't want you building your hope in them, your confidence in them, because thieves can steal. They will steal. And I don't care how clothes look, moss will get in and eat them up. But I want something that won't rust. I want something that will always stand. You know why Jesus said, secondly, you ought to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven? It's because God takes care of the sparrow. He said, if God takes care of the fowls of the air, and if the lilies that grow tall not, will not your heavenly Father take care of you? Put in your tithe and offering. Will God not provide for you? Some of us don't tithe, and some of us are in a getaway car every Sunday. Touch your name and say, are you in the getaway car? <laughs> Robbing God. Don't want to put God first. One man was so caught up in his wealth and he was a tither. He was giving God a whole lot of money. And, and when he started getting wealthy, he stopped giving. So he went to his pastor and said, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I used to be a big tither, but now that I'm a millionaire, I don't give like I used to. So just, just hold me up in prayer. The pastor said, no, don't go nowhere. Let's pray right now. He said, Lord, I want you to take away John's house. I want you to take away John's car. I want you to take away all of his wealth. He said, holy preacher, don't start praying like that. He said, didn't you say you want to get back better? Since you got all this, God, you can't tithe no more. So I'm going to ask God to take it away so you can start back tithing, putting God first in your life. Is he first on Sunday? A lot of us take Sunday for joy riding and fishing. And some of us say the fish bite better on Sunday. You just like the man told his little boy playing in the front on Sunday. He said, boy, don't play in the front on Sunday. Go in the back. Little boy said, isn't this Sunday in the back as well as in the front? <laughs> you ought to be in church on Sunday. Amen. Putting God first. Amen. Not joy riding. Not having a good time. But put God first. I'm serious about this message because God takes care of the foul. Listen, a lot of us are worried about what's going to happen. What are you worried about? God's in control. You're worried about your health. Some of us worry about worry. One lady said, I know worrying pays off because half stuff I worry about never happens. People just love the word. You know, worrying is contagious. Have you seen that? Have you ever noticed that some folk make a room better when they leave? I hate to ask some members, how you doing? I said, how are you doing? Well, Reverend, I'm aching in this knee, and I woke up this morning, arthritis was here, and my children were giving me a lot of trouble, and I had a pain on my shoulder. I had, when I finished, I had to start feeling myself. See what I heard. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, some folks have such a sad story, and that thing is contagious. They have you thinking something wrong with you. You have to get out and around people that talk negative and talk down, and get around spirit-filled people that say, I'm the God, the Lord, is my strength, and I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. 
I have no time to worry. God takes care of the sparrow. God takes care of the lily. And I never heard of a sparrow out there on strike. Saying I'm in a picket line. Now it doesn't mean that you're supposed to sit down and do nothing. Because after all, even though God feeds the sparrow, he had to scratch for it. Some people don't want to work. They want a job but no work. They go to work at 12, take an hour lunch and get off at 1. The mic said amen. You have to work. You have to provide. Now God will feed you, but you have to get up and do for yourself. So if he takes care of a sparrow, and you know some of us don't even have bird sense. Some of us even act worse than the bird. When you think about it, some of us are just like a sparrow. We only come to singing. Yeah. Touch your neighbor and say, he's getting my house. They're just sparrow. They're singing folk. They don't come to nothing but sing. They don't want no word. I come to hear the choir. I want to hear the group. When the preacher get up, oh, Lord, they go to sleep. Sparrow members, and some of them are just like buzzers. Some folk don't come to nothing but a funeral. And some of us are just like an owl. We sit up and look pretty and wild and don't know a thing. And some of us are just like a pigeon. We don't do nothing but carry news. And some of us are just like a parrot. We only tell what we hear. I heard they say and look like to me. <laughs> and then some of us are not even as good as the lilies. Because some of us are just like a rose. We don't show up to church to Mother's Day. And some of us like a lily. We don't come until Easter lily. Hmm. And some of us are like a cactus. You have to be careful how you handle us. We'll stick you. Let me tell you something. If God takes care of a sparrow, and, and look, the Bible said God sees the sparrow when he falls. If God can tend the funeral of a sparrow, don't you know he know about you? In fact, the Bible said he even can count the strings of hair on your head. Now, that's not hard for a few men out there that I see. <laughs> Get a little bold like me. That's not hard. But think about the strings of hair on your head. God count all of them. So why should you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven? It's because your father knows what you have need of. He knows your need. He knows you have bills to pay before you take out your tithe. He knows you have rent to pay. He knows that you have children to feed. God knows your body. God knows your situation. And you don't have to worry. Amen. He knows. He's omnipotent, omnipresent. He's transcendent. He's immutable. My finite mind cannot comprehend such cosmological complexities. <laughs> when I think about the goodness of God and who he is and what he knows, I don't worry about what I give him. I don't worry when I put him first. He knows how much I can bear. He knows my down sinning. He knows when I'm up. He knows when I'm down. He knows when I'm right. He knows when I'm wrong. I don't worry when I serve a God who knows my situation. Some people don't know your situation. They see the smiles on your face, but they don't know what you go through. They see you smiling in your home, but they don't know what happens when the doors are closed. But God knows just how it is. He knows how bad it is, and he knows how much you can take. He know when your relatives don't want to own you. He know when in-laws become outlaws. And when you can't tell nobody else about what's bothering you, when you don't want to share it with other Christians because they might put it out, get down on your knees. 
and talk to the almighty God and tell him, God, you know you got all power in your hand. And I'm a witness that I close this message. I want to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness because of who God is. When I know who God is, powerful, everywhere, at the same time. When he's going, he's coming, and when he's coming, he's going, he's always meeting himself. Do you really know who God is while you're worried? When you know who God is. He's, he's, he's the creator. When I think about who he is, and what he did, and this awesome power. I don't worry about my little problem. If a God can scoop out the valleys, and pile up the mountains, thread the earth with rivers and lakes, spoke in his word, and leaped over rails and dales, and when it settled down, it hatched out a universe, stepped out from behind the curtain of nowhere, and stood up on the platform of nothing, and said, let thou be, and let fell in love with be, and created a creation. Put sugar in a plum ground and make a lemon taste sour. Proteins and meat, calcium and milk. God, who holds this whole world together. I don't worry because the earth is the Lord and the full is their heart. And they that dwell in it. I don't worry when I'm going through things. I know who he is. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the enemies. In his hand, he got the finance. In his hand, he got the trouble. In his hand, turn it over to him. Turn it over to him. Let him have it. I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him, neighbor, whatever you're facing, God can handle it. God can handle it. Can handle now grab your other neighbor behind you. Tell him, neighbor, neighbor there's no, no problem. Too hard for God to solve. Let him have it. Let him have it. He, can he can handle it. You know why I can handle it? He's big enough. Yeah. 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 Big enough. Work it out! Work it out! Everybody stand. I know who he is. Therefore, I don't worry about tomorrow. A God who can come into a Red Sea and turn the Red Sea to Route 66. Sure can handle my problem. A God who can step into a fire of furnish and make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fireproof. <laughs> Somebody said God changed the fire. No, he didn't. That fire was still hot. I think, I think he just made them fireproof. God won't change your situation. He'll make your situation proof. He may not even change some folk in your family, but he'll make you family proof. So the thing that used to get you down, your husband used to cuss you out, now you're praising God. He's conditioned you so you can take it. And he never changed the situation. And then he'll put you in a lion's den and have you out there taming lions. You have your first course in zoology. And lions will become kitty cats. You know Daniel had a fur coat before you all were wearing one. <laughs> Slept on one. Do you know who God is? Good God. If the doctor told you something, they told me, Reverend, she brought me the letter. The doctor said, 
this is, I'm mean, terminally ill and I only have but a few months. I said, don't bring me that mess. She looked, I said, that's man said. I said, if you start believing things you hear, it will become. If you keep talking about you finna die, you will die. A lot of y'all broke today because you talk broke. You even look broke. I hate to be around broke folk. <laughs> I want somebody to talk positive about God as a prosperous God. I know who God is. I'm not against people preaching and successful people who are Christians. I don't know where we got this thing about if you're broke, you're a Christian, you have to be poor. Well, you know it's going to be some poor folk in hell. It's bad to catch hell here and then go to hell. That's a lot of hell, isn't it? <laughs> I, I want God to bless me now. I don't want to wait until I get to heaven to be blessed. Why don't you trust him and he'll give you a home? I, I got a problem with these Christians saying you have to look broke now. Somebody say, well, Jesus was poor. Says who? Do you know what he left? <laughs> before he came here. The only reason why Jesus was without things here because he was only borrowing stuff. He borrowed a cradle. He borrowed another man's mule. He borrowed a cross that's supposed to be ours. And somebody said, why did he go in Joseph's tomb? He, he didn't need a tomb of his own. He wanted Joseph's tomb because he wasn't going to be there for three days. And Joseph wasn't going to need it because he wasn't going to borrow it. So he didn't need no thing because he already had it. When he left, he went back to his wealth. And if you got a problem with folk wearing jewelry, don't go to heaven. All you church folk act like you've been baptized in lemon juice. So sad. Amen. No joy. You're not supposed to make noise in the church. You're supposed to be quiet. Don't scream so loud. Well, you did it in the nightclub. In fact, you bawled all night. They had to run you out of there. I would go to church, but the whole church too long. When you went to the club, you stayed. In fact, you didn't go out until we were leaving the church. And you mean, and somebody said, well, I, that man had free offering. I don't go to that church and take up too many offerings. And you gave the devil all of it for wine, women, and party. Yeah. And you gave all your money to the world. And now that you're saying you don't have no money for God, why are you going to give the devil more amen and shout than you give God? I think God deserves a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's jump for it. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. He deserves more than the enemy. Praise God. I'm going to open the doors of the church. I want you to come down here now. For the first time, say, I am putting God first. Be not dismayed. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. Come on now, if you haven't put him first. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will, some of you put your business first. Take care, put God first. Oh. I 
what it is, you put him first. God will take care of you every day. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. much you be home with your family and won't come to church and God will end up you lose the whole thing get up say family I love all of you but God first tell your husband while he's trying to make you stay home say baby I love you but I can't stay home on a Sunday morning I, I, I honor you but you're not first in my life God has to be first God we God will take care of you. Some people out, somebody out there, I really sense you have really gone through some terrible times. And let me tell you why you have been going through so much. Let me tell you why you've been going through so much. It's a test. It's a test. Well, well, look at the word testimony. You can't spell the word testimony without spelling the word test. trying to break you. He's not trying to destroy you. He's testing you. He wants to be first. You have to put your family behind. Even your children, like he tests me, you have to put them in the right place. They are only gifts. They are not idols. If you worship them, he may take them. Bring it down here and say, I'm a, I, I have put God second. I, I have not been giving him my time. I have not been giving God first. I don't even pray when I get up in the morning. And you may not be joining. You just may be coming out here and making an honest confession before God. And I want you to come down here behind these people and make an honest confession. Lord, I've been put. I know I have not put you first. I know I have not put you first. I wake up thinking about people. I wake up thinking about my enemies. I, I eat and sleep about my disappointment who all hurt me somebody let me down they are controlling you if you let somebody that hurts you have you up all night and you can't sleep they are controlling you you have to let that thing go and say you will not control me I'm going to get my rest I'm going to put God first in my disappointment and if you don't bury your past, your past will bury you. We want to minister to you now. The pastor's going to come. Franklin ain't going to come. Pastor, there's people in this altar I've never seen in this altar. God is doing a great thing right now. Everybody just stretch your hand this way. Father, I praise you for washing and cleansing and setting free from the power of sin. It takes your power to change our nature. It takes your power to cleanse us on the inside. 
It takes your power to loose us from the chains and the shackles of sin. And we receive it tonight. You are able, Lord. We receive your power. Lord, in Jesus' name, cleanse and forgive. Right where you are, just say, Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Jesus, right now, I receive your cleansing power. Now, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord, that I don't have to worry anymore, that I don't have to be afraid. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you, Jesus. You will supply all of my needs. You will make a way for me. You will be my healer. You will be my shelter. You will be my, 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 my righteousness. You will be my protection. You will be my defense. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up your hands and praise Him all over this building.